I'll be demonstrating the use of value shapes to create a realistic image. Although for most of the video, I'll be working in black and white, you'll see how the result can be the basis for color work as well. Here's the reference photo I'll be using. It's a picture I took while walking around a street market in Lucca, in northern Tuscany. Actually, this is part of a larger photo, but for my purposes, I'm only interested in these three figures. So I'm going to eliminate the background, and I'm going to approach this group as a vignette. It's an interesting collection of gestures. I'm also going to take the color out of the image to make it easier to see the values, that is the light and dark of the image. I don't want to get confused by the local colors. One trick to see value more objectively is to hold up a colored filter to the subject. This can be achieved by looking through the lid of a small plastic box. But with a digital photograph, it's simpler just to temporarily adjust the photo's saturation down to zero. I know that if I can successfully map out the pattern of value shapes in the subject, it will become easier to mix appropriate colors later on. In a live painting situation, my usual method would be to block out large masses while squinting at the subject. This helps me establish some rough proportions without focusing on any details. Whether in black and white or in color, a light medium tone seems to get the ball rolling. Next, I will go for a darker medium tone, still keeping things rough. It's important to remain focused on abstract shapes, which are suggested by the blurred image, and to not think about the structure of the things to be represented. I accept that the shapes I'm putting down now will be modified later. That's okay. It's part of the process. In this case, I think adding a third rough value makes sense, so I'll add some light gray shapes. In paint, this could take the form of a milky, translucent wash. I don't want this to be anything like pure white, because I want to reserve near-white values for smaller, precise shapes much later on. Now it's time to shift gears and look for some more precise shapes. I'll go back in with a somewhat darker gray, and with my reference back in focus, I'll be looking for more exact shapes. And I'll place these within the rough tones that I've already established. To help myself see these new shapes, I'll often posterize my reference into just a few values. I'll still make my own judgments about simplifying these suggested shapes, but the computer's objectivity can be very valuable.
it's important to keep checking the relationships of each of these new refined shapes to the value pattern as a whole. And if I show some discipline during this phase, it will be easier to place subsequent shapes in a more casual manner. In effect, being very careful for a short period allows me to be looser later on because those careful marks will become landmarks and anchors. At some point, it becomes important to look for the negative shapes, which in this case are the white graphic shapes between the figures. This is the opportunity to define the contours of the vignette. As before, I'll try to look for shapes rather than things as much as possible. If I get my shapes right, the things will appear on their own. My paint doesn't need to be completely opaque and it can be interesting to leave behind traces of earlier guesses at shapes. Small highlight shapes will have much more impact now, but I will still ration them. If my shapes are a little too hard edged, there's a solution for that. In paint, it would mean brushing tones together. Quickly, the look can go from quite graphic to soft. And despite the blurring of edges, everything suddenly looks more realistic. After this softening, there's another opportunity to selectively restate some edges and apply final touches. A value study like this can stand on its own 
or be used as an underpainting for color work. With the magic of Photoshop, I can judge this result by artificially layering on only the color information from the original photo and see that I've made a reasonable facsimile. This same value pattern was used in this color study on Canva paper. And subsequently, for this larger work, which went on to collect some prize money in a large online competition. I hope that was helpful in some way. Take care.